Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast, brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Blogger Genius Podcast. I am your host, Jillian Leslie, and this is one of my special episodes where I have to share something that I think is really important, and I think it can help you. I want to talk about selling and how icky it can feel and emotionally how it pushes us into places that feel uncomfortable. However, if you can master this skill, the world opens up for you. And selling is not just about selling products or things like that, like everything in life is about selling. It's about selling yourself. It's about selling your vision. So I hope that you find these tips helpful. Now, how I develop them is because, as you know, if you listen to the podcast, we are launching Milo Tree Easy Payments. It's launched, but we're in our beta. What that means is I have been working closely one-on-one with online entrepreneurs. Now, everybody I've been working with has been female, and I think some of this stuff does really relate to women and how we can hold ourselves back. So it's so interesting because I've been working with women in all different kinds of niches. They have all different kinds of personalities. But the one place that I feel everybody struggles and everybody kind of gets this pained look (laughs) on their face is when it comes to selling. So I wanted to share with you what I have been sharing with all of these entrepreneurs to get them to lean into putting themselves out there and to recognize that selling is fantastic. And it is a skill that I recommend you work on. It's like a muscle. And I I really hope that you will start exercising it if you're not. Okay, so I've got eight tips here that I want to share. And the first one, in order to sell, what is the thing you need? You need to believe you are worth it. It's weird. We walk around and a lot of us, including myself, really have issues around, are we worth it? Are we worth putting our stuff out there and people buying it from us? Um... I know when I turned 40, I had this realization that if I didn't believe I was worth it by 40, when was it going to happen? At 41, 42, like I was old enough. I kind of thought that at some point you've reached this point where you just feel like an adult and you step into yourself and you just can sit in your own skin. And what I realized was it doesn't work like that. You have to work at believing in yourself and believing you're worth it. Nobody is going to anoint you and tell you you have arrived. You get to do that for yourself. So as you put your business out there, as you continue to dream and plan and work hard, Know that you're worth it because if you've already, say, started a blog or started putting content out into the world, you are in, you are are living in rarefied air because most people can't do that. So already you're ahead of 90% of the world. So please take that in and recognize you are worth it. And in fact, I'm going to anoint you because nobody did it for me and that was kind of a disappointment. Okay, number two, somehow we have all internalized that selling is icky, it's unseemly, there's something potentially offensive about it. And I don't know, I've noticed this with the women I'm working with, they are so happy to tell me about the paid workshops they are putting together and all the ideas they have and how they want to turn their paid workshops into memberships, self-services. They have so many creative ideas. And then we put together their free sales page. You get free hosted sales pages because we want everything to be easy. And they see it come to life and their eyes light up. And then I go, great, now you get to go out and sell this. And I typically say, hey, by the end of today, do you think you could get two 
sales. Oh my God, I, they just look at me mouth agape. So this is what I want to say. How about thinking about it differently? You are an expert, small e, in something and you make other people's lives easier. So I want you to think about selling as service. You are providing value. You are putting good in the world by creating solutions and selling them to people. And remember, people value things they pay for. So when I started to think about this, it flipped my whole perspective on what I was doing because I do believe in what I am selling and hopefully you do too. You are not selling snake oil. When I mention this to the entrepreneurs I'm working with, I can see them soften and I can see them understand selling in a new way. Okay. Third tip. Selling is not about you. It's about you providing value for somebody else. So a lot of times when people I'm working with start talking about what they're doing and they do an Instagram live, let's say, or a story and they go, Hey guys, I want to tell you what I'm working on. Oh my God, I've got this great thing I am working on. You're going to love it. And it's like, no, 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 it's not about you. Remember it's, Hey guys, I have a solution for you that you need to get because it will change your life. So whenever we focus the limelight on us, nobody cares. What people care about is themselves. So sell that to them. So again, notice how much like language we use around ourselves. See if you can flip it to your audience, which leads me into Number four, and this is the idea that when you are selling, you are a storyteller and what you want to be doing is painting a picture of the transformation for the person buying your product or service. So like, let's say it's a necklace. It's like, I want to paint the picture of how beautiful you will feel in this necklace, how it will make you kind of stand up a little straighter. Or if let's say I teach you a skill, how you will feel about yourself when you've mastered this. So it is like you hold the space for them and say, I see you and I see how much better your life will be when you buy my solution. And that's why being specific is so valuable. Really, you are, you're a master storyteller. Okay, that now we are moving on to my fifth tip. It's all about testing because at the end of the day, you don't know, but the market does and you need to figure out what the market is telling you. So an entrepreneur will say to me, well, when should I host my workshop? And I'll go, I don't know, but my gut says, oh, do it during the week or do it on the weekend but I don't know. So then what I say is put it out there, put it out there fast and see if you get takers, see if people buy from you because maybe they don't want to do a workshop on a Saturday. Maybe Wednesday night is the ideal time. Well, we don't know. So you've got to test. Oh, by the way, this is one of my other, other uh, tips. Test, 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 test quickly, test often and Do not take it personally. Say nobody buys because people don't want to go attend your workshop on a Wednesday night. Who knew? Great. Create a new sales page in Milo Tree Easy Payments with a different date or time and see what people think. And this is why I say test fast. And two, if it doesn't work, it is not about you. It's that you weren't able to connect the pieces. Think of them as puzzle pieces. I've got this offer. You've got this need. I want them to fit together. And if they're not fitting together, okay, good learning. Let's come up with a new experiment. Okay. The next tip that I tell people, cause you know how I say, Hey, can you go out and can you get two sales? And they look at me like I am insane. Well, what I say is do guerrilla marketing. So what does that mean? 
guess what? Chances are you know people in your community, like your friends, let's say on Instagram, go DM them. Send them a voice message. Make a connection and put yourself out there, especially for the people who've bought from you before or who are already your biggest fans. Like get in there and be personal. They talk about how you know, on the internet today. We are building these relationships one-on-one. Well, I say go sell your solution person by person. Instead of going like, hey guys, I got this thing for you. It's like, hey Michelle, I know this will work for you. So you want to check this out. And I want to make myself available to answer any questions you have, but I've got a solution for you. Okay. My next tip is get salesy, which means if you feel like you are overselling, you're probably just at the point at which you're getting your message out there. You think that people are paying attention to you like watching everything you are doing and they are not. People are busy and distracted. So to get your message to rise above the noise, you got to keep getting it out there. And for example, for me and for many of the entrepreneurs I am coaching, email can be magic. So I say, keep sending emails, you know, resend them to the people who don't open your emails with new or subject lines. Like keep putting your message out there, keep painting the picture, keep letting people know that this is the solution, this is the product they need to buy. And the truth is, let's say they get annoyed with all the emails you're sending, they'll unsubscribe. These are not people who are your people who will buy from you. So understand they're doing you a favor and chances are you being salesy is not that salesy. So I want to push you to that to that point where you go, oh my God, I'm so tired of talking about this. And then the last point, I think I have now covered all of my newest sales tips, but the last one is, and I mentioned this at the beginning, but everything in life is about selling. It sounds really kind of, again, awkward and weird and icky, but it's true. It's like if you can nail this skill, you are golden. And the one other thing I wanted to share is if you're the kind of person who gets lit up thinking about things like I'm going to start, I'm going to create a course, or I'm going to write an ebook, or I've got this big project I'm going to work on. Well, guess what? I want you to reach out to me because I don't want you to do that. A lot of times people will go, I'm going to go work on a course, you know, do all the videos and create the PDFs and set this whole thing up. And I'll be back in six months when I've got my course ready. And I say, chances are you're, you are a creative spirit. You want to help others and you are terrified of selling. Because at the end of the day, at the end of those six months, when you are so busy and you feel like you are doing such important work, you are going to have to get out there and hustle and feel uncomfortable. So I want to say to you, if you're in that place where you're like, okay, and then I'm going to work on my course or any project where you're going to go off and work on it for a long period of time, reach out to me because I say, let me help you set up a paid workshop where you can test this idea, get it up in an hour, start putting it in front of your audience and see if you get takers. Because I cannot tell you how many times I've heard the story of, I went off, I worked on something forever, I came back, I tried to sell it and it was crickets. Nobody bought it. Or I got three sales and people are demoralized. 
I say, if you have an audience, whether that be on social media, whether it be blog traffic, whether it be an email list, hopefully it's a combination of those things, there is money to be had in your community in selling directly to them. But that's it. You do not know if you're onto something until you test it. And this is why I say test quick, test cheaply, test often. It's funny. I, I tr- coach people to do the opposite of kind of the conventional wisdom. I say, you come up with your idea, you go sell it first. Don't start building anything until you know that those puzzle pieces fit together, that you have an audience that says yes to what you're offering. And then I say, well, if it doesn't work, guess what? You know, no skin off your nose, go try something else. Go put another offer in front of people. So I hope that this podcast episode inspires you. It kind of shifts the way you think about this. And I say go risk it because at what point, like I promise you, nobody's going to come to you and say, you are ready. You're ready to do this. You're ready to put yourself out there. Nope. It's you saying to yourself, I'm ready and this is scary and I'm going to feel vulnerable and I'm going to feel icky and kind of uncomfortable and I'm going to lean into that because I know that that's where the growth happens. And I just want to share one last thing. This is what makes my job so satisfying. When I see people, women, because it's been mostly women, when they finish doing their first paid workshop and they see that people have gotten value out of it and that people have shown up for them, people have paid them, and they recognize how much they actually know, their confidence goes through the roof. It's like they feel so validated and then they immediately say, I loved it and now I want to turn this workshop, say, into a membership or I want to offer coaching or they get so brave. It is so satisfying. It's why I love my job so much. It's almost like I get to be, I don't know, their counselor and I see the, again, ready for it, I get to actually see their transformation. And it makes me so happy. So if you want to have a transformation, I want to work with you, email me at jillian at mylowtree.com and tell me you want to go on this journey or reach out to me on Instagram, DM me at mylowtree. But I really hope you take this risk. You're already taking risks, so please pat yourself on the back. What you are doing, most people would be too terrified to do. And I will say, if you have an audience, there is a powerful, powerful income stream right there ready for you to tap into. So please risk it. Because if not now, then when? And nobody is going to give you permission except you. So I hope this episode gave you some stuff to think about. I hope it was inspiring. I hope it was motivating. If you have any thoughts you want to share with me, I would love to hear them. And I will see you here again next week.